supply of a few things like well can you have him call me tonight I actually try to have him call me like ASAP okay thanks right well guess what Michael Aronoff is a fucking psychiatrist so he can prescribe meds. No, he's a psychologist. He can't. He can't. He can't. A psychiatrist can. A psychologist can. He said psychiatrist. That's what Candy just told me. I thought he was a, a psychologist. psychologist. Yeah, that's what he said. But that, whatever. If he if he can get him, he can get him. A psychologist can. A psychiatrist can, and she yeah. said that that's what he is. Oh, Why they, would she tell me that? She told me she, he was a psychologist. Well, she just told me that he was a psychiatrist. <laughs> I gave him a psychiatrist. He's an MD. Yeah, I gave him a call, and hopefully he can get you. Like, if he can get you five, six days supply. You gotta understand something about, about, like, I don't like to lay my shit on other people. That's all. Um, you OD on this shit. I've seen you like it totally zoinked out of your brain. Don't you remember when you tried to extort me in my own house? Because you were so high on fucking whacked out on shit. What did you do? (laughs) What did you do? Get that smile. Get that fucking smile. He tried to extort me in my own house. How? Because this this production company wanted to film in my house. So he was living in the room in the front while we were doing our thing, remember? And I and I say to him, look, Dom, you know, I, I got to make some money and rent out my place for five days for this shoot. You're going to have to stay with some friends or whatever that we'll set, you know, we set it up and da 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 and we, He was so whacked out. He was taking all this medication and drinking. So he sits me down. He's like, you know, Rossi... Uh, being that I have to go and being that we're partners in this film thing then I'm thinking that you know that we're partners all around so uh, if you're gonna get some money for this film here and I gotta leave the, the house I should get paid too and I should get a piece of the action and I'm like <laughs> you fucking delusional you're in my house like you know we had this whole thing I'm like you're out of your fucking mind and we went back and forth and then I said fuck you I got really pissed off I was like you're a fucking ass Good night. I went to bed my wife was like, heard it. She's like, I can't believe it. He's trying to extort you and you're, you know. And I was like, don't worry. This guy's out of his fucking bird on whatever the fuck. And then the next morning he woke up and he came into the kitchen and he goes, Ross, sometimes I say some pretty stupid shit. And he goes, I didn't mean any of that. And I was like, all right. You know. well, I mean, all you could have said is, well, rent was due last week and you have. No, well, I was like, well, you haven't paid rent in a year, but now you're entitled to what? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, now there's no doubt. <laughs> no story, doubt about right? it. Yeah. No, that's a true story. The kind of show is like you have this ongoing battle with, with medication and booze. You've had it since I know you. And you, 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 and you self-medicate yourself when you can with booze because you like it. You like how your control of it and how you feel. When you don't have no booze, you abuse the shit out of your fucking medication. Then when you run out of it, you start. I don't no, know. No, no, that's not actually. That's not true. I mean, I ran out of this medication. Um, what happens is you have a one eight hundred number you call, okay, which I called. And I re up my meds. And what they do is they say to you, okay, this, you have like a whole bunch of, uh, of meds and you have an RX number for each one of your meds. So you, you punch in the number, you tell them what the number is, and they tell you, okay, this med is renewable on, say, August 5th or whatever. All right? Which it was. The you know, problem was, the VA is kind of screwed up in a way and they sent it to Mississippi. It got sent back to them and now I mean you were here the other day when they called me you know and they said well where are you and where can we send the meds and I thought and it takes actually it takes a week to 14 days for them to you know and I told them on the phone I said can you rush it because I'm almost out they said well give us five to seven days so. Well, you'll probably get it sometime next week, but I'll see if I can get something for this week. Yeah. Because to tell you the truth, the Xanax is like a very addictive drug. And I've always 
maintained my regular dosage. I'm supposed to take one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at night. And, you know, I've been taking like 14, you know, just to keep the edge off. Because, you know, I want to do my work, which I've been doing. You know, I framed all that well, shit today. I you know, which kind of compounds it. Yeah. You know, because it makes it even harder. But I mean, you did get to drink a whole bunch of beers today. I had like three beers. That's all I drank today. I had three. And beer don't do it. And that's why I really, like, s try and stay away from the hard shit. You know, because I know what that does to me. And I don't want to go there either. You know. All right, so let's just, like... Don't worry about that. Cutting the edge. Yes. So, <laughs> so uh, where, where are we going today? We're gonna go to outpatient clinic at the VA to get pills, medicine. That I really need. How are you feeling today? Same as I felt yesterday. You know, I don't think it was last night I didn't get like any, any sleep because I don't have my trash doing. You know. I gotta have the trash doing. Sleep. Just can't sleep without it. And what's with the giant glass of white wine for breakfast? Uh, I'm trying to get my fucking insides to stop shaking. What kind of thoughts are you having? Yeah. That I don't like to talk about. No? No. Why? Because it's, it's... It's silly. To talk about. Silly because you think... You think it's silly or silly because you don't see the use in it? I think it's silly to talk, you know, for me to talk about it because it doesn't do no good to talk about shit. Yeah. Well, why don't you try, man? You never know. I mean, no, I'm just it's, curious. It's the same you. thing, you know. It's like, you think you're just fucking checking out and saying, fuck it. I've been here 61 years. But I can't do that because I got my kids and my grandchildren. So that ain't gonna happen. The thing I have to be careful of is not to tell them that. Because as soon as you tell them that, you go upstairs, you know, and they put you in suicide watch. But do you, do you feel you're truly suicidal? I have suicidal thoughts. But I don't think I'm suicidal, no. Because I won't do it. Yeah, I mean, you don't seem like you would do it to me. No, I just I, wouldn't I, do it. I just it. don't see that you would do something like that. You're too much of a warrior to yeah. fucking check out. No, I wouldn't. It's the thoughts. That bother you? That bother you, yeah. Well, it would bother me too if I was thinking that way. Yeah. You know, it's like... It's a funny kind of thing because you, 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 you kind of like... You want to just like fucking say, fuck it, it's over. Yeah. 
But again, on the other on the other hand, we got the show that I'm happy about, and I'd never let my family down that way because <laughs> I knew what it would do to them. No. Yeah. It'd be the worst, most destructive thing you could ever do. Yeah, and I, I just wouldn't do it. It's it's that constant fucking thought that bothers you. It's not. You know, like if it wasn't for them and you guys and, you know, and, and you know, I would just say, fuck it, you know, because I, I really, really, really don't like to feel this way no more, you know, I mean, it's such a, really a bad feeling. 